and um, let me introduce uh, let me introduce my translator for today, uh, Joe Gorman. Mike, how are you doing? Good. All right. Hey, 大家好，呃，这里是罗蒙老师，然后他首先介绍一下他的翻译。我是赵国本。Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the session. This is kind of like a trial session uh, we've been doing uh, together with Mike and with the help of John Tao. Um, we were making some of the videos for Yuko, but those were taken down. Um, there's some history about that. Um, so for those of you who have watched those Yuko videos, um, hopefully guys, you kind of already understand a little bit of the analysis that we do. Um, and today's session is going to just only advance that. Um, uh, so, so, I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, I've learned that this week, this whole week, uh, there was a holiday uh, in China. So, uh, and it's Friday night and it's late. So, um, I appreciate that you're here. Uh, 欢迎，首先欢迎大家呃上来。我知道呃这一周在中国来说是一个大节日，然后呢大家在度假过程中，而且还跟我们一块上课，呃所以说非常欢迎大家。啊、uh, ，today what we're gonna do is I want to establish a conversation、uh, with this group. Um, I know that、uh, there is a group of, of traders who、uh, wanted to establish some you know training, like of training. So we can talk about this. So we're going to start with some Q&A, uh, some questions that were uh, sent to us via email, or Mike has uh, picked those up from QQ group. Then we're going to do a really small exercise. Um, I always like exercising with students. Uh, we're going to put them in the chart. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions on the chart. Uh, then we'll probably go through some case studies. I want to understand the markets that you're interested in. and then. Uh, we always will refer to the Wyckoff method basics, uh, the slides on the schematics, and that's the plan for today. 嗯，首先呢，还是非常欢迎大家，感谢大家参加我们的课程。然后呢，我们今天恐怕会有一些练习，因为他呃，他知道很多学学生呢都希望把魏科夫方法应用到自己的呃交易生活中，所以说我们要通过大量的练习来达到这个事情。然后呢，我们可以有一些案例。让大家来分析一下，然后呢，有一些个同学通过 QQ 或者通过电子邮件给我们发了很多问题，我们在这里呢把问题稍微解答一下。这些东西做好以后，我们首先还是要回到魏科夫的基础知识，因为所有的东西都要从基础来做起。Now I want to stress, uh, stress this, uh, that um, under the Chinese laws, uh. We cannot analyze the last bar of the market or the stocks. So all of the examples that we're going to go through um, uh, is, are going to be more historical examples. 嗯，首先呢，他想强调一下，他说我们啊不清楚中国法律到底怎么样，所以说我们为了避免这个东西，来说我们在分析的过程中尽量不涉及最近的。股市情况或者是市场情况，所以说我们很多的案例可能都是历史图谱。All right, okay, well let's start. 好，开始。Okay, so let's go through some of the questions, and um, I want you to be free to ask uh questions even now. Um, so in the questions box, you could just write down the question, and Mike could translate this. Uh, but first, let's just go through. Uh, this set of questions here. 呃，首先呢，我们回答一些问题
。然后呢，呃，大家看到那个在在这个 Go to Webinar 那里面有一个问题选项，也就是说你现在也可以提问题。然后呢，呃，我会给大家把这些问题交给罗蒙老师。然后呢，首先来说呢，在你们没问之前，我们先把以前的问题回答一下。Um, so some of you already know that I, I teach a specific curriculum in English to my uh, to actually anybody in the world. Uh, if you are okay with English, you could sign up for our classes. Those are usually you know 16 session courses. Uh, two of those uh, like a trading course and the practicum. Um, so the question here is the curriculum of the Chinese training the same as the American ones. So yes, I could definitely make it the same. I think that I should make it even more specific to the Chinese market because, as I've been studying uh, with Mike's help, you know the, the Chinese markets. Um, I clearly see there is a difference. There is, uh, and we'll talk about this today a little bit. There is such a, a specificity to the Chinese market. Um, the principles are still going to be the same, uh, yet that. Um, Specific characteristics of the Chinese market, how it's being accumulated or how it's being distributed, those are extremely important nuances that needs to be added, you know, to the curriculum. 嗯，很多同学问，就是说，呃，我们这个中就就是有中文翻译的课和罗蒙老师在美国的课是不是一样的？是这样，因为罗蒙老师呢，他以前用英文讲课，呃，是面对全世界学生的，就是各国学生都可以来参加。然后呢？他讲的基本上来说，欧美股市都差不多，因为它的规则都差不多。但是这次呢，就是中国股市啊，他在呃研究中国股市的时候，他发现中国股市跟美国股市、跟欧洲股市有很大的不一样。所以说呢，他这个课程也针对中国股市相应做了调整。大家知道，在那个呃吸筹和派发上，中国股市跟欧美国股市、欧洲股市有很大的不同。所以说，原理上，魏克夫原理上。讲的都是一样的，但是根据中国的特点，中国股市和期货市场的特点，罗蒙老师往这方面做了调整。All right, next question. Uh, and the person asked, I would like to ask if you will provide continuous uh guiding training to facilitate us to integrate Wycliffe in our trading after your normal courses. So usually the main course. Uh, Wake of Trading course uh, gives you the knowledge, and then uh, students graduate to the practicum, and the practicum is the course uh, with the same time of duration. And I don't know how we're going to do this uh, for for Chinese students, uh, but it's probably going to be the same way. So we're going to have uh, the main base of knowledge, which is going to be the Wake of Trading course. And then after that, uh, you guys will be able to graduate to uh, the practicum, where we basically uh, develop the visual skill recognition of the concepts, knowledge that we've gained from WTC. 嗯，然后有一些同学问，就是我们参加完这个课程以后啊，希望有一些个指导性的训练来帮助我们更好的理解魏科夫，然后这方面的安排。罗蒙老师说呢，其实，在魏科夫的课程中，基本课程中。他首先来说，这个讲的是魏克夫的最基础的知识。很多人呢，学生就是大家知道，你如果要研究魏克夫的话，必须从最基础的知识开始。上完这个魏克夫基础知识课以后呢，有一个练习课，这是罗蒙老师的两门课。这个练习课呢，就是把魏克夫的知识，呃，应用到这个日常的图谱分析中去。然后呢，大家不知道修完这两门课以后，大家还需不需要更多的？这种呃培训来帮助呃理解更好的理解魏克夫。All right, next question is a little bit specific. What's the difference between、uh, A B C D phase analysis and trading range analysis?、Um, so, and I kind of was thinking about this a lot.、Um, so, A B C D phase analysis、um, is a part of What we could say a trade and range analysis. So trade and range analysis would include phase analysis. It would include、uh, structural analysis. It would include volume price analysis, and so on and so forth.、Um, and specifically here, phase C.、Um, 
So uh, I'll talk about phase C, obviously, this is a part of the phase analysis. And again, uh, it's very important to understand that Chinese markets are uh, being uh, run and manipulated and traded so differently that um, some of the characteristics of phase C, we would have to uh, kind of identify those uh, specifically for this market. 嗯，然后呢，有些同学问这个 A、B、C、D 阶段分呃阶段呃阶段划分和呃交易区间的这个分析有什么不一样？然后罗木老师讲呢，是这个 A、B、C、D 这个阶段划分啊，它其实是交易分析中的一部分。然后呢，另外一些部分呢，包括结构分析，或者是包括呃成交量价分析等等。然后呢，因为中国市场呢，这个机构操纵这个市场的方法。和其他地方不一样，所以说它在吸筹啊、派发啊，或者这个 face C 啊阶段都很不一样。所以说将来呢，他也会专门讲一下这个 face C 如何来把握。All right, next one. Publish a book in China. So I'm just going to be very short about that.、Uh, yes, maybe in the future. 嗯，有人问罗蒙老师有有没有在中国出书的计划？他说也许，也许将来会有。I think what's important right now is just、uh, for me to establish the communication with my Chinese students, like a session like this one,、uh, to establish some kind of ongoing、uh, course for you guys, for those of you who would like to take it, and then after that,、uh, produce some kind of maybe like even you know basic video lectures,、uh, so that you guys would be able、uh, you know to watch some of the basics,、um, and maybe only after that, you know. To do some kind of a printed publication. 嗯，首先来说呢，目前来讲，呃，那个罗蒙老师还是希望通过这种方式跟同学交流和建立联系。然后呢，在也许以后还会呃，除了这种讲课以外，还会出版一些个呃录像那种大课的资料。然后将来的话，再考虑出书的问题。现在来说，他觉得这样跟同学们交流最重要。And the last comment is more kind of like a general comment.、Um, you know, a lot of you guys have expressed, you know,、uh, your gratitude, and I'm really touched, and I really appreciate all of the kind words that you send in the email. So with your questions, and uh, uh, definitely, I see kind of like a growing、uh, fan base that we have.、Um, so it's very. Pleasing to see, and I'll I'll try to do my best to accommodate your needs, you know, in this like of space. 嗯，呃，第五个问题呢，大概跟罗蒙老师跟同学之间的情感互动了。很多同学说，呃，非常感谢罗蒙老师，你的视频对我们有很大的帮助。罗蒙老师看了这些个鼓励和感谢的话呢，他自己深受感动。他希望能跟同学建立一种很好的关系。他也尽大可能的。跟同学呃讲课来满足同学们所有的要求，他将来呢也会腾出时间来，也许到中国去啊或怎么样。All right, so there are some comments, Mike. So maybe we can deal with those. Uh, this is Professor Roman. Can you explain uh distribution and accumulation in detail? That's one question.、Mm-hmm. Another question: We need to um okay. How much effort should we input to grasp or to master Vakov method? Uh, compared to other uh technical uh analysis, what's the advantage of Vakov method? Is it easy to master Vakov?、Mm-hmm. Okay, so two questions: How much time does it take to master Vakov method, and then what's the advantage? What's the edge of the methodology? Uh, so the first question, and I'm going to base this answer based on my observations of the students either in the U.S. or from around the world, the ones that you know take the course.、Uh, usually within two or three months of the course,、uh, you know, people have different milestones. So the first milestone usually comes within, you know, two to three months. So people start understanding the structure more. 呃，首先讲一下啊，对不起，我都忘，我老听着那个罗蒙老师说，我都听听呆了，忘了忘了算了。呃，首先讲一下那个刚才同学问的
呃，利克夫方法跟呃呃对其他别的方法有什么优势？多长时间才能掌握？罗蒙老师说呢，呃，一般来讲啊，通过他的学生来观察来说，两到三个月可以掌握呃这个结构分析。啊、uh, ，then after the completion of the course, they have you know what we call kind of like a basic lack of knowledge. 然后呢，大概在四五个月之间能够掌握基础的魏克夫知识。Then when they go into the second segment, so from four to eight months, this all goes into practice. 然后四到八个月的时候，大家会把魏克夫的知识应用到实践中去，就是去练习。啊、uh, ，But it's really、uh, after one. Or one and a half years, where people report to me that now they understand the method, they understand all of the concepts, and they've been practicing them enough. If they do practice,、um, and I do insist that my students actually practice, there is, I truly believe that、uh, you know, and I see this from students. If students do not practice, then they are not.、Um, Going to see those concepts, and they're not going to recognize those concepts on the charts. So, if you practice, then in a year, year and a half,、uh, you should have good results. 嗯，但是呢，一般来说，要到一年到一年半以后，很多同学才回过头来跟他说：“哦，罗蒙老师，我现在终于理解魏克夫的基本概念了。而且，如果这些人练习的话，不断的练习的话，他也会说：哦，我在这个呃交易中。” Alright, so uh, what I'm basically saying is that uh, you will have to spend. Some time learning this material. This is not just a simple moving average and and the application of the simple moving average.、Uh, the methodology is vast. It it has a lot of nuances,、um, and it takes time just to even absorb all of the knowledge, and then you know to acquire the skill、uh, requires more time. And obviously, you will be if you are going to be a Wyckoff student, then you're going to be a Wyckoff student for the rest of your life. You will be. Um, learning this、uh, as a skill,、uh, as a mastery for the rest of your life. 嗯，他说呢，这个东西真的需要大量的练习和认识。他说，很多同学呢，其实花了很长时间以后才能够掌握知识，但是花要更多的时间才能掌握技巧。但是呢，它的好处就是，当你掌握了技巧以后，当你真正的呃熟悉了魏克夫以后，你会把魏克夫方法。应用到你的交易中一辈子，所以说这是一个非常值得的、值得的事情。他还是说，这个需要大量的时间来学习和练习。All right, now let's quickly talk about the edge. So, to me personally, the method,、uh, you know,、uh, has an edge because it discusses discusses institutional behavior. 然后咱们首先谈一谈魏克夫方法的特点啊，这个特点呢，或者它的强项呢，是首先它讲了机构的方法，也就是机构是怎么做的。The second edge is that、uh, Wyckoff gives us a structural context, so we understand if the signal occurs、uh, somewhere in the structure, we understand where in the structure the signal occurs, and some of the signals、uh, in the structure will not be taken just because We are not in a specific structural spot. 嗯，第二个呢，就是魏克夫他非常重视结构分析，也就是很多信号呢，它其实在某一个结构中，它才非常的有用。很多的信号其实它出现了这个信号，但它是不在那个结构的时候，我们应该其实把它呃忽视掉。And then, um, it all the method also has strong analytics and the way how we. Uh, think about the markets. So I think that's an edge as well. 呃，另外呢，这个魏克夫方法就是说，他在分析方面，他是非常非常强的，非常非常有优势。All right. Okay, Mike. Uh, 
I don't know some other questions here. Or okay, should we move the, on? The Professor Raman, can you talk about the UTAD that uh, applies to after distribution uh, in detail? After UTAD, uh, the structure of distribution uh, and after. Can you talk about that? Okay, what's, what's the next one? Uh, let me see. The next one. The last two. Uh, no, Jim. Okay, here's another one. Uh, who should? Okay, uh, who should be <laughs> uh, walk away from the market? That means what kind of people the to go away from the markets? Yeah, what kind of person should trade and what kind of people should not trade? And uh, how how long should you know can a person learn back up? And uh, and be profitable. Okay, can you uh, translate this into Chinese so that people would know the question? Okay, let's start. Uh, 刚才有一个同学问，就是什么样的资质的人才适合学习和交易？呃，什么是样的人应该离开市场？而且呢，要学多少久以后才能够稳定盈利 ？Okay, so as to the Utah distribution accumulation. We will look into this today. Oh, I'm gonna go through through the schematics, um, and we could have more questions there. Uh, time time permitted. Okay. 然后第一个同学呢，因为他问了那个 UTAD， 也就是上冲回落，就是派发后上冲回落以后这个结构会怎么样？然后呢，罗木老师说，如果今天时间可能的话，他会讲一讲这个呃。派发后的 U T， 呃，派发后派发后的上冲回落。Um, as to the answer, this is a very interesting question. That that question was never asked before. So who should be not trade in the market? I mean, I'm I'm definitely commun in communication with so many students around the world. Um. And to me, I think that somebody who uh, thinks maybe that just listening to the lectures uh, and then trying to apply those concepts right away in, into uh, his or her own trade-in, I think probably that's a wrong approach. I think a person who is more of a student of the market, who will study, who will practice, who will be asking questions about the concepts that he or she does not understand. I think that's the student that actually is gonna succeed more. So uh, when you come to classes like this, um, I would just say prepare to study, you know, prepare to work. This is not just, you know, sitting there and listening to, to me talk. Um, so hopefully that answers this. 什么样的资质人才能够适合进入交易市场啊？这个问题，然后呢，他说，他大概是教学这么多年以来第一次被同学们问到这个问题。然后呢，据他来分析啊，他说有一些同学呢，大概觉得，哎，我听完上完一门课，不管是什么人的课，然后我呢，我自己回家以后，按照这个老师讲的东西，我自己去应用就可以了。他认为这样的学习态度其实是不好的，因为他认为这样成功的几率也非常低。什么人的成功几率高呢？因为他这个学生啊，要当市场的学生，他要不断的去分析市场，要理解市场，要有一个学习精神，要经常问老师。他问到问题，遇到问题以后，赶快拿回来问老师。哎，这个问题我怎么解决？然后呢，经常的跟市场互动，经常的跟老师互动，这样的学生才有更大的几率成功。嗯哼 ，OK， all right， well， let's jump into the exercise. Uh, this is this is exciting, the first exercise together. So um, uh, my first question, and this is a historical chart of the stock um, that we don't know. This is a daily chart. Sorry, uh, Ramon, it's a weekly chart. A weekly chart. Okay, great, weekly chart. I was, Mike, I was uh, about to probably say that, you know, I know <laughs> a little bit of the Chinese and here, here I am failing like this. Okay, so a weekly chart. Uh, so the question number one that I want to ask the group, and you could just write down your answers, and Mike's going to translate this. Do you see this as an accumulation? 
and the most probable move is to the upside? Or do you see this as a possible distribution? So please have a look at the chart and write down your answers. 首先来说，他给大家做一个练习啊，这是一个历史图谱周线图，呃，他不告诉大家这个时这个时间段和这是哪一只股票，然后他大家让大家看一看，看完这个图谱以后呢，分析一下，到目前为止到最后为止，这是一个吸筹区间，但但吸筹呢还是在派发，也就是说以后的股价会上涨还是会下跌，让大家看完以后。在在那个问题那个那个 box 里面填写自己的答案。And we'll wait a little bit, maybe like you know, fifteen twenty seconds, just to give you some time to think about this. Um, 嗯，我们给大家几分钟时间，然后让大家把这个答案写在这个呃，就是答案箱里，然后我们看一看，好不好？ Uh, this is a distribution, one student said. Mm -hmm. uh, William said it's accumulation. And mm -hmm. Distribution, some say, distribution. Yeah, distribution. Some students say distribution. Mm -hmm. Excellent. He said, uh, another student said, 能把绿色成交量的 K 线标注下。He asked you to mark the green green volume. Uh, he he asked you to mark the green volume. Uh, the the you know the the price under the green volume corresponding to green volume. I think this this is one and this is one. Okay, so very interesting. Sorry. Sorry, Roman. Let me answer Zhili's question. Zhili, uh, this is this is this green line's the the relative price. This is green line's relative price. Okay. 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 Saying that this is accumulation, Mike. Maybe I'm wrong. A little yeah, bit. that's that's it exactly. And okay. many students say it will be fall in the future. The price will fall in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. All right. Now, second question. I want you to answer. Whatever uh, bias you gave us, accumulation or distribution, I want you to answer the question of why do you think so, based on what. You think that this is accumulation, or based on what you think that there is a distribution? Um. Um. Second question, Luo Meng teacher, asking everyone is why? That is, if you think it is selling, why is it selling? Why is it selling? If you think the price will fall, why is it selling? Why is it selling? Okay. 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 嗯，我们还是要给大家一点点时间，让大家想一想，然后回答这个问题。Uh, 有一同学说，呃、uh, ，one student answered because the higher high, higher low, probably just be, yeah, higher high, higher low, yeah, higher high, higher low. Yeah, yeah. Higher, higher, okay. Uh, another student said, uh, because when it's when it's fall, the supply already reduced. Okay. What uh, else? Another student said because I say uh, I I see high see high uh high amount selling there. High what? Uh, amount high amount of selling, supply. Okay, it's for the distribution. Okay, the got distribution. it. Yeah. Okay. What else? Uh, let's see the others. Because the many selling on the top and the next rally is weak. Uh, but we still need to watch the price reversal to compare the fall to the old, to the old one. It, another say is because uh, the effort trading down does not have a result. Looks at. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. So I see, guys, that some of you kind of have you know that basic knowledge, uh, either 
you know, on the trend analysis or maybe on the effort versus result, um, you know, and some of you just, you know, maybe a, kind of like at the beginner's level. And this is exactly where, you know, usually the group starts. Uh, so we have different levels of knowledge. For those of you who feel more comfortable with any of the ideas that we're going to discuss, I'm challenging you to find some kind of nuances there that are going to be applicable to your trading. Uh, and obviously just, you know, cohesively uh, get the material together in, in your head and, you know, to understand it. Um, uh, so, but yeah, I'm really happy that the group is active and gives all of this answers. 嗯，首先来说，龙蒙老师觉得，哎呀，大家的这个都有很多的知识，然后有些同学呢是根据趋势来分析的，有一些同学呢是根据努力和结果的关系来分析的。嗯、呃，总总之吧，他非常高兴，大家呢就是非常的热情，非常的积极来分析市场，而且呢，他也鼓励大家把魏科夫的呃知识应用到自己的市场分析中去。Um, and the reason why I'm happy is because I, I truly believe being a teacher for some time now that there is kind of like this uh, mystical connection between the teacher and a student and that connection is always through the question and the answer. So as you could see, you know, I'm, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions in the classroom environment for, you know, from you guys uh, and the reason why is because I want you to think. I don't want you just to listen to me. I want you to look at the chart and answer the questions that I'm asking so that your mind would be actively, uh, you know, resolving all of those questions. 嗯，他刚才说的非常高兴的，呃，原因就是他看到同学非常积极，在他的教学生中，教学生涯中啊，他发现有一个神奇的老师和同学的联系，就是通过这种。问问题和互动来进行的，所以说他在将来的讲课中，他会问同学很多的问题，然后让同学来回答，让他同学来积极的投入。他希望呢，他的学生不只是坐在电脑前面听他讲课，而是积极的跟他互动，积极的一块想这个问题到底是怎么回事，积极的来回答这些问题。All right, so now let's go through the chart. 那好，现在我们来看一下这个图谱。And again, I'm going to be asking you a series of questions, and you can answer those. Um, and maybe Mike will be translating some of those. But I'm just going to go through the logic here, and we're going to start with something very interesting. And this is something that I've learned uh, working with Mike and looking at the uh, Chinese stocks and our markets. Um, it's the way of how institutions are participating in the Chinese markets. 嗯，他在以后的讨论中呢，有可能他也会问大家一些问题，然后大家回答。然后呢，首先来说啊，咱们看这个图谱。他看图谱呢，他就是说他在研究中国股市中发现有很多非常有趣的现象。So what's interesting about、uh, Chinese markets is that the volume signature that usually represents institutional activity, the high volume signature.、Uh, Is going to be spread out. It's not going to be consistent. So we will have、uh, periods where, during the accumulation, we might have some kind of increase in the volume signature that would identify institutional behavior. And then on the way up, as the price goes up through the markup, we're still going to see some ways of institutional buying. And then. There's going to be a period of inactivity where institutions will do nothing, and then they will either distribute on the way up or then distribute on the way down. Okay. Okay. Uh, he found that China's market institutions are very unique in operating. 呃，比方说，咱们从吸筹来讲，他认为吸筹这个这个时间段啊，会比较分散，它并不是集中在一次的，比较分散。所以说，比方说这个图谱来说，他说这如果这里是吸筹，这个 accumulation 是吸筹，这里面有很多高量，它只有在高量的成交量的时候，才代表机构非常活跃的时候。他在这里吸筹呢
，吸完以后，它肉还可能不动。然后到这个拉高的过程中，它再次吸一次稠，再次吸稠，然后再拉高的时候，它有可能会会这里面有小量的派发，就开始派发了。然后到这里，然后下跌的过程中接着派发。So, um. One of the things here is just to notice those areas where institutions are present, and that's basically the skill that we need for this chart right now. Okay, so he said he now want to pay attention to is where the volume is high, that is, the volume is high. These high volume areas represent the organization is very active. All right. Well, let's see where they were present. Right, where institutions were present. Our goal again is to figure out what big institutions are doing. The reason why we want to do this is because we want to understand where a lot of money going into. We are assuming that institutions are smarter, they have more information, and therefore their decisions are much better than just uh, our decisions. And we basically want to uh, see the footsteps, the uh, prints of that institutional behavior and uh that would help us to define the bias. 嗯，呃，大家知道这个高量的地方，刚才已经讲了，这个高成交量的地方代表机构特别活跃的地方，所以说我们就要研究这个高量的地方它的价量价是怎么样的。如果说这个高量的地方代表机构的行动的话，我们假定这个机构它是聪明钱，假定机构比我们有更多的信息，假定这个机构它的决定，他最后的决策是对的，所以说，让我们通过这个成交量来研究这个机构的行为。All right, so let's start at the beginning of the chart, and we kind of see that there is a spike here, but we don't have enough information, so it doesn't really mean a lot to us. I think what's important is what comes next. Look at how flat the volume signature for the rest of the rally. So the question here is, what are institutions doing at this point? And I think that the institutions at this point are just in, being inactive. And this inactivity by institutions, I actually going also into the reaction as well. So the question here is, what does it mean? Um, first, let's look at the bottom. The bottom is 我们不知道，因为什么？前面的图谱我们不知道，前面的是怎么样的我们不知道。所以说，我们大家只看到这里一个比一个非常大的高量，在拉起来以后，在这个上涨的过程中，这个高量反倒消失了，哎，变成了平量，比稍微平一点。所以说，我们认为，我们认为这在这一段过程中，在这一段过程中，我们认为机构是不活跃的。这个机构不活跃，不止表现在它的拉升的过程中，表现在下跌的过程中，机构也不活跃。So when we look at the uh, volume signature, it's actually not moving. So when we look at the demand, the red bars, we are seeing that demand is actually larger than you know these green bars of supply. So that gives us um, a clue of the initial bias, at least at this point of time, and the bias here is up. Just because supply is going down and demand is a little bit better, so demand is producing the result. Uh, supply is producing the result as well. But look at the levels of the supply. So there are no institutional selling that we see so far, mm. and that's a very encouraging sign. And we're thinking that the bias is to the upside. So first, let's look at this part. We use this part to describe the bias. That is, this part before. 来，我们来测呃预测，那么机构在做什么？将来的方向是哪一个方向呢？那我们看看这里的需求。如果我们说这个红线柱，也就是拉升的这这些相对的成交量，它代表着需求的话，那么我们看整个所这个区间之内，需求会比这个绿色的成交量它的供应柱要大，稍微大一点。所以说，我们说需求大于供应，在这个整个阶段来说，那么。另外一个呢，就看在这个下跌的过程中，这个需求，这个呃供应量都比较低，所以我们说，在这个拉升过完以后，也就是说，这个机构在这里面，在这个下跌的过程中
没有进行大量的派发和卖出，所以说从这一点来说分析，我们说有可能将来的方向是上涨的。And then we could see that there is some kind of increase in the volume signature here, and our first observation about this is that finally institutions are doing something. Institutions are present, and we want to define. What they are doing. 从这段成交量和这段成交量来比，大家记不记得刚才罗蒙老师说，在这里面，因为成交量比较低，我们说机构是不活跃的。猛然间到这段以后，成交量立刻就高起来了。我们说这段时间是机构活跃的时间。那么我们就说，哎，那么我们要分析的就是机构在做什么？为什么这段的成交量猛然间高起来了？ So we see that the volume signature has increased. What does it mean? That probably means that both demand has increased and supply has increased. And we just need to understand what is more dominant, demand or supply. And when we look at the result of what has happened, we see that the result is a rally that is a constructive rally. We are overcoming some of the points of the resistance. We are able to stay above、uh, some levels of the resistance. So result is to the upside. So therefore, we are thinking that the increase in the demand signature is going to be more than increase of the supply signature. So,、uh, so demand is going to dominate supply, and demand is going to be of institutional quality. 嗯，我们看到这里面呢，成交量是增加的。大家看到成交量是增加的，那么成交量增加意味着需求也增加，另外派在这个供应也增加，只有双方增加的时候，成交量才是增加的。那么我们看，那么这个我们要回答的问题就是，那么需求占上风呢，还是供应占上风？然后我们看看价格的变化，价格的变化呢，其实是有建设性的变化的，也就是说它突破了某些个阻力位。突破了两个阻力位，然后达到了这一点，它不断的拉升。通过拉升来讲，我们看到哦，那么需求是占上风的，因为价格在上涨，所以说需求在占上风。所以说从这点来说，我们说是需求大于供应的作用。而且呢，我们要看到需求应该是机构造成的需求，或者是机构质量的需求。So where do they buy? I mean, where do they exactly buy、uh, on which bars? So they are most likely institutions are buying right here, and we see that in the volume signature. Then they are buying on the next way up, so we see it here. Then we see that there is some small buying within the range, but majority of it comes later on on the rally. So they are buying on the way up. This is an accumulation on the way up by institutions. 嗯，那么我问，那么这个既然是需求占上风，那我们看机构是在哪里买的呢？那我们看机构第一次买这个高量是在这里，也就是相对于这个这个这个红线来说的。第二次的高量是在这里，这里面量比这里都大，所以说是在这里。然后在横盘的时候有一些高量，然后再一次的高量出现就是在这个阶段。所以说这是说机构在拉升的过程中进行了买入。So all of this institutional buying defines a value zone for them. What is the value zone? Well, this is where they see that the price is fair to them to own this stock, and anything below this value is going to be an oversold condition, and anything above that value is going to be an overbought condition. So I'm going to roughly draw the first value zone, the first institutional value zone. Um, and you kind of could see that every time we go below this、uh, into this zone, we see some kind of institutional activity where they are seeing this as a value and they are starting to buy. Look into this area right here. This is buying. This is not selling. This is demand,、uh, institutional demand increasing,、uh, and just stopping the. Movement to the downside、uh, by purchasing the stock at this level. Here is、uh, the same concept, but the only difference is that the price actually went into the trading range, but was stopped again 
by institution institutional by. 嗯，然后罗姆老师说，你看啊，这里面是机构吸筹购买的区间的地方，所以说只要有机构大规模吸筹购买的地方，它就构成了一个区间，它画了一个区间，它把这个东西叫做呃价值区间。也就是在这个价值区间画好了以后，那么任何价格低于这个价值区间的时候，它叫做超卖，也就是这个卖的太多了，超卖了。然后呢，也就是价值更大了。任何价格高于这个地方，在这个区间之内啊，高于这个地方，它叫做超买，也就是买的过多了。那么画完区间以后，大家看将来的价格变化，只要一进入这个区间的时候，这就是有价值的。所以说，在价格下跌的时候，出现了什么？出现了高量。也就是机构在这里买，买完以后就变成了价格终止，就是说这个价格就停了 ，stop 了。然后大家再看这里面，这里面价格跌到这个区间以后，就开始量非常增大，立刻就开始增高了。这里不是机构在卖出，这里是机构在买。机构买完以后，这个价格立刻就开始慢慢慢慢停止下跌了。所以说这里面是叫做机构的价值区间。So、uh, the concept of the institutional value zone is extremely important, and this concept that's what creates、uh, resistance and the support. We usually think of,、uh, you know,、uh, support and resistance as just the function of the price. But I want you to start thinking about those two concepts as a function of institutional activity at the specific levels of the structure. 嗯，他说机构的价值区间非常这个概念非常重要。这个重要到什么程度呢？就是说，它的两端构成了一个是阻力线，一个是支撑线。过去大家看阻力线和支撑线的时候，都是看价格。而通过魏科夫的培训来说，他希望大家培养成习惯，我们这个阻力和支撑是在以机构的呃他的吸筹他的行为来构成的。Ramon, sorry, I cannot hear you. I'm sorry, I muted myself. Okay. <laughs>、um, so where is where is the next、uh, time that we see institutional buying? It's right here. We see this on the breakout. So they are willing to buy now at the high level. So、uh, when institutions are buying at the higher level. They are basically saying that we are、uh, willing to pay higher prices, and therefore there is a bias of a continuation that we're going to still continue the rally that has developed currently. 嗯，下一次我们看到这个高量在哪儿，也就是机构最活跃的地方在哪儿呢？在这个突破的地方。大家看到这里是这个高量量堆，那么相对应的价格是这里突破。这个时候。说明什么？说明机构愿意出高价来购买这些市场上的复仇，也就是在这个整个拉升的过程中，机构可能活跃。我但是啊，我在听罗蒙老师讲啊，他只是说在这个突破的过程中，他看到了机构的身影。So it's very interesting how the value zone,、uh, you know, starts to expand, and we are probably seeing the value zone slightly high now for them. Um, and we would be expecting if the price goes into the zone where we had a lot of buying. So the zone now is like this.、Uh, when the price goes into the zone, this is where institutions most likely are going to become active again. 嗯，当机构在这个突破这个地方买了以后，他把这个价值区间的上限提高了。也就是说，他在这里面以后，在这里突破买入以后，他的机构的价值重，价值区间就变成这个区间了。罗蒙老师画的就是这个区间，所以说只要价格进入这个区间的时候，机构有可能就开始变得非常活跃了。So look what happens next. It's it's like they bought uh into this trend uh twice. First um and let me just kind of erase all of this. Uh, so they bought in twice into the trend. It's institutional buying. They establish、uh, two value zones. 
those are the two value zones and one is above another and then this whole time we see from the volume signature that institutions are just inactive at this point hmm. um, so therefore we are assuming that after the accumulation on the way up they are done they are doing nothing大家看整个这个大波段来讲那么这个肌肉机构活跃的地方在哪呢在两个地方在一个是在这个地方也就是在这个高量的这个这个区这个地方还有一个在这个地方它这两个地方活跃的机构的活跃造成了两个机构价值
，我们分析这一段，我们当然看到了机构在这里面是买家，刚才已经说了，因为这个需求占上风，这里机构是又是在机构的呃价值区间之内，机构在买。Well, let's talk about institutional institutional、uh, composition. And we usually, you know, the method was taught to us that usually institutions are all smart institutions,、uh, and they're of the CO type, CO as a composite operator.、Mm -hmm. So this term was coined by Wyckoff, and it basically was based on the practices of、uh, specific、uh, campaign operators. Almost、uh, over a hundred years ago, somebody like J.P. Morgan, J.C. Livermore,、uh, James Keen,、uh, you know, a lot of the speculators and campaign operators at that time. 嗯，我们首先来看一下这个机构的组成啊。这个机构组成呢，我们首先来说这个这里面的构成成员，我们把它叫做市场的综合人。它这个综合人的概念是魏科夫在一百多年之前提出来的。也就是说，它是这些个市场的真正的后面的呃手，就是说整个市场，它就给形容成一个人。而这些人呢，比方说什么人是代表呢？就是杰西·利伯莫，就大家知道那个大硕市场大硕手，还有 J.P. Morgan 摩根先生那个大银行家，这些人属于这种呃市场的综合人。So that was a long time ago. That was you know more than a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago. Now. In the current com institutional composition and the way how I teach this material, I've actually kind of went away a little bit from the concept of just the composite operator and the public.、Uh, and the way how I teach this now is that yes, there are some huge CO type of、uh, institutions that are present、uh, in the market, and usually. I think of somebody like Warren Buffett, you know,、uh, that's going to have a lot of money, and th this money is going to move the market in a significant way.、Um, and then there are just institutions that are going to be,、uh, you know, smaller institutions with smaller size. So Warren Buffett is going to have huge size.、Uh, You know, long-term tax advantages that they're gonna use. They're also gonna be slow on rotation,、uh, portfolio rotation. They are. They will be、uh, kind of measuring、uh, their performance. So performance matrix are gonna be extremely important to them. So they are bound by the specific rules in the market as to how they can operate. But predominantly, it's the huge size that's going to be the determinant factor here. 嗯，这个市场综合人呢，在一九零零年，也就是这个阶段出现的时候，大家刚刚才知道，就是摩根先生啊，或者是利伯莫啊，是那个时候他们是市场综合人。然后现在来讲，现在来讲，罗蒙老师要提到现在的市场综合人呢，他比方说大多数是机构。从这个机构来讲，他就说谁是代表呢？呃呃，巴菲特，巴菲特代表。巴菲特的特点是：第一，他有特别多的钱，他操纵的股票就是说有特别多的钱，有大量的拥有股票。第二个呢，是他长期持有，他的特点长期持有。第三呢，他换股的时候换的比较慢，也就是换股不多，因为比较长时间持有嘛。另外就是呢，他买的股票来说，基本上是呃价值股，也就是说表现非常好的股票，他才买。Then the second group, which is extremely important, because this group also has some size. It's not a huge size, but it's a big size. And together as a group, they are very, very influential. Those institutions are going to be hedge funds.、Uh, they are going to be mutual funds. They're going to be registered investment advisors, pension funds, insurance companies, banks. Um, so those are also big institutions, but their principle of operation is going to be based on、uh, trend emergence. 然后另外一部分呢
就是说，呃，这些个 C U type 的人是什么呢？就是说综合人 type 的什么？他说叫做机构的呃趋势跟从者，也就是别人创造的趋势，他们是机构性跟从者。他们的特点是，他们也有很多钱，但可能没有这个巴菲特这一类的人的钱多，但是他们钱量也很大。然后这些包括什么对冲基金啊、共同基金啊，或者是养老金啊。或者是呃呃保险保险公司啊等等这些钱，他们的特点是跟从趋势。So one once this group, this second group of institutions are going to come in into the market, they usually going to come in at the specific place. They usually going to come in at the time when the trend is being confirmed. 第二类，也就是机构跟从者、趋势跟从者，这也是机构啊。他们进入的时候，他们进入在某一个特定的点，比方说龙宫老师画了这个蓝的这个这个圈他们是在这点进入的。这点有什么特点呢？就是在机构，呃、不是 ，sorry， 在趋势基本上已经建立以后，他们才开始建立、建进入。So and then they just gonna stay in the trend and try to write it as much as possible. 当趋势建立以后，他们进入这个趋势以后，他们就跟从这个趋势，跟的时间越长越好。And their exit is all going to be based on the performance. So they will be exiting, uh, where the trend is being broken. 他们什么时候出呢？也就是他们出的点，基本上来说，就是说这个上升趋势被打破以后，他们才出来出出来。So we kind of could see that、um, if this was more of the CO type of buying, then we see that the trend followers, institutional trend followers, have,、uh, have joined them on the way up. And then, as the price was going down, we see some institutional selling, some institutional activity. It's both buying and selling. So there is no, there is no just selling, and there is no just buying. There is some selling and some buying, and I believe that in this situation, the trend followers were trying to get out just because the trend was violated, and we see that from the trend analysis. So here we are, and that highest volume signature comes on that break of the trend. So they were trying to get out of this position just because the trend was,、uh, was broken. And then the CO types are buying again. 嗯，那我们看这个整个趋势中谁在买谁在卖。刚才根据罗某老师分析的这个，最早的趋势创造者其实是这种 CO type， 也就是市场的综合人，他们来创造这个趋势，他们在这里买，造成这个趋势。这个趋势回调再上升的时候，在这里看到趋势已经建立，已经。已经成型了，在这里买入的是谁呢？是这些个机构性趋势跟从者，也就这些人有很多钱，他们开始在这里买，买完以后，他们让这个价格持续上涨，他们一直在跟从。这里面呢，罗姆老师画了一个趋势通道，这个蓝色的趋势通道。那么谁在这儿卖呢？大家看这个卖量也非常高，在这两点的时候，买量和卖量都非常大。而这个卖的人是谁呢？其实就是趋势跟从者的这个机构，他们一看，哎，趋势线、趋势通道被打破了，这个时候他开始卖。大家看到这个卖量非常大，在这这块卖。那么到这儿来呢，他们也卖。谁在买呢？跌破了这个趋势通道以后，买家其实是这种 C O type， 也就是最早创造趋势的这些个机构，他们在这里大量的买入。Sorry, Mike. Um, and this is a very important. Point right here, so I want you to be focused on this.、Um, the CO is buying on the way down. Here, CO was buying on the way up. Why CO is buying on the way down? Well, there are two reasons why it's happening this way. First of all, there is some kind of value that is built in in price, and we see that. Uh, value from the price dropping into the value zone, and secondly, there is liquidity, 
And liquidity is the thing that attracts the CO type uh, institutions because they can't really buy from the public a lot. Public does not have a lot of uh, uh, weight in this game. You know, it's a small fish. But if they are buying from other institutions, then there is a lot of liquidity. And that's what they're looking for. So CO is willing to buy on the way down from institutions that are giving up their positions just because the trend has been broken. Hmm. 市场综合人力的大的机构超大机构在买那么也就是换句话说超大机构在什么时候买呢是在趋势下跌的时候他买那么罗蒙老师就问这个问题那么为什么这个 如果是说这种CO 他买的。Ramon, we cannot hear you again. Sorry, sorry, Mike. Okay, so let's erase all of this. Let's put the values on again. Uh, let's kind of identify where you know institutional buying has happened. So all of these areas right here, and then we want to see where is the next spot where they bought. Um, so I think it's um, obviously somewhere here, somewhere here, somewhere here. There's some buying on the way up as well. Um, so we're seeing how they are buying again on the way up. And look how aggressive this buying is. Right? So first there is aggression in the way how they mark up the price. Uh, there is uh, an upward result that is increasing so much. So we are overcoming the previous resistance. And plus, they are buying in the new zone, buying in the new value zone. Go ahead, Mike. Mike? Oh, yes. Uh, 这个罗蒙老师画的这个价值区间啊有时候我听他的讲课听得入迷所以说老忘记翻译不好意思啊大家看他画了两个这个机构的价值区间那么大家看这个机构在哪儿是买的呢然后大家看到这里面机构是肯
，大家看到这供应进入了，这个量非常高。那么很多人说，哟，那这个你看从结构上来讲，这是上冲回落，而且从这个量上来讲，这个音量非常高，在这上有个大量的派发。那么大家问的这个问题，提这个问题也非常好。很多人认为这里是派发，然后价价格将要下跌。那么我们要问的问题是，这里确实出现了供应，而且也确实出现了类似的上冲回落。这么一个结构，那么大家问的问题就是，这里的供应有没有被吸收？被谁吸收了 ？So one of the things to think about this、um, is to think that the effort has increased, the pressure to the downside has increased a lot. This is the highest volume signature throughout the whole chart. So we know that the downward pressure is enormous, and yet, what is the downward result? 龙门老师说：“请大家看看到这里的成交量，这个堆量，它能用圆呃蓝色圆圈画这个这个这个量，这是史上最高量。换句话来说，这里的努力是最高的。那么努力是最增加的这个 E 就是 effort， 努力是最高的。那么结果怎么样？也就是说，如果我们说这个量是派发量，也就是说这个量是供应量的话，那么努力这么高，那么结果呢？它有没有把价格打到非常低呢？” So we are seeing that with a lot of pressure to push the price down, where does the price go? It only slightly goes below the resistance, and then it recovers quickly back into、uh, above the resistance and kind of starts to rest again、um, on the、um, on the resistance, which acts now as a support. And look at the supply signature; there is no supply. Here, so institutions are not actively participating in the selling. Whatever the selling has happened here, it has been absorbed already so quickly. 嗯，大家看啊，非常有意思是这根最高的供应量或者是最高的量，其实它对应的是这条线，也就是在这里面它的供应是最高的。那么供应最高以后，它的结果呢？努力非常高，结果只把价格打到这个。过去来说是一个呃阻力线，现在越说变成了支撑线，打到这个价格之内一点点，然后立刻就被反弹回来了。反弹完以后，再次努力向下跌的时候，大家看这个供应已经减少，比原来减少的非常多了，而且这个它的价格刚好到了这个过去的阻力线，现在的支撑线这里。So just based on Uh, where the value is right now, how the value is holding relative to the move to the downside, and on the test、uh, around the level of the resistance, we are concluding that institutions are still very interested in this position, and they are marking the price up,、um, accumulating more shares on the way up. So that suggests that there's going to be a continuation of the move to the upside. And not only that, the rate of absorption that we see here、uh, around the area of the resistance、uh, of supply absorption is very high, and usually this would indicate to us the timing, which is now, for the trend, you know, to continue, and also a possible character. Future character, which is of the leadership, Mike. Yes. 呃，然后我们根据我们根据这个机构的特点，我们看啊，这里面本身来说，我们知道机构在这里面大量的吸筹，而且呢，它在这里面提高了这个价值区间的价位，也就是这个价值区间提高了。到这儿来说，而且机构在这两这两个地方红的这这两个呃量量堆之前，大量的吸筹。而且在这里面，大家看到了，刚才说了，他努力非常大的向下打压，就是很多机构在卖出的时候，就咱们说他供应很大的时候，他的价位并没有跌下很多，立刻就回来了。通过这点来说，我们可以说 C E O 在这里面是继续吸筹。而且这里面呢，它出现了一个特点，特点是什么？就机构吸筹的速率。大家看到很多小机构机构放弃筹码的时候，大机构迅速就把这个筹码全部吸收掉了。而且在第二次。测试这个价位的时候，你看在这里测试的时候，基本上供应非常少，供应迅速的减少
，所以说在这个速度，机构吸收的速度是非常快。从这点来着，我们看到两个可以推断出两个问题：第一，那么价格有可能会继续增长，因为什么？继续增长拉升，原因是机构在整个这一段过程中，它不是 C O 啊，我们说的是 C O 就是最大机构，它不是在派发。而是在吸收，而且它吸收的非常快，吸收非常猛。这是罗蒙老师刚才讲到的，只有在量大的时候，他才能够操这进行这种操作。然后呢，第二个我们可以推断说，第一，推断说，首先他既然已经吸饱了，吸了那么大的量，那么首先来说，这个时机，时机是什么呢？有可能就是现在，他吸完了以后，可能要就要动作了。第二就是特点，他这个机构以后它的价格变化，有可能就变成了一种。领涨股特点变化。So、therefore, we are concluding that this is an accumulation. 所以说，通过这些特点来说，我们我们的判断是，整个这个区间机构，就是或者是 CEO 综合人这类大机构，它是在吸筹。Now, somebody has mentioned higher highs, higher lows, higher low, higher high, higher high, higher low. So yes, this is a definition of the uptrend, and you were right about that.、Um, so we definitely want to acknowledge that. But、um, you kind of could see, and this is just a primer for you guys, you know, of the analysis、um, that we would be studying. And again, it's very, very specific to the Chinese markets because Chinese markets work so differently because of the rules. No selling. Uh, no short selling. You know that defines specific behaviors, both by public and institutions, and it's extremely hard for institutions, you know, to be present in this environment. So I see a lot of periods of inactivity where institutions just doing nothing, and this is the time when you don't necessarily want to be extremely active too. 嗯，呃，刚才有同学说到了这个高底高顶，比方说这两个点是高顶。这里是高底，这里是高底，所以说他非常非常同意，非常赞赏这些同学的判断。呃，同学每次呃判断非常好的时候，罗蒙老师都非常高兴。他说他肯定每次都会呃呃提出来、呃、表示肯定。这是第一个。第二个呢，他让同学关注的就是成交量，这些高的成交量的地方代表着机构超级活跃的地方，而这些地方，比方说在这这些地方，是机构不活跃的地方。罗蒙老师希望在机构稍微特别活跃的时候，同学也活跃，跟着他们操作。机构不活跃的时候，也许咱们同学也不应该在这些地方啊、呃、进行操作。So let's talk really about tactics. It's all good that we're talking about the institutions, big money, and so on and so forth. But what are our trading tactics? 嗯，那么谈谈交易技巧。那么很多时候呢，大家都知道，喜欢谈那个庄家啊，喜欢谈大机构啊，大家都很高兴。那么我们谈一谈交易的技巧是。So we're going to start with the long-term investor. The long-term investor is going to be somebody whose horizon is going to be beyond one year holding period. 首先，我们谈一谈，那么第一类呢是长期，呃，投资者。那么这个投资者他的投资波段大概是超过一年，就是持筹时间超过一年。And by the way, the majority of you who have nine to five jobs,、uh, who is busy with the families, who is not there in front of the screen each day in the morning,、um, you know, throughout the day,、uh, you know, for whatever number of hours that you have there for trading, the long-term strategy is going to be much more profitable. And the reason why the long-term strategy is going to be much more profitable is because when you are holding. Uh, your stock and you have your position, you are not doing anything else. So you are not bound to make more mistakes, getting in and getting out.、Uh, at the same time, the consequence of, of that is that you have to time your entry perfectly because with the market, because if the market is going down, you don't want to be investing in the market that is going down. 嗯，呃，首先来说他，他呃提醒大家，像他们同学，有些人有上班族，比方说每天八点到下午五点要上班，另外呢要忙于家庭，忙于孩子，很多事儿。这
，对于这一类同学来说，他认为其实作为长期的呃投资者，其实是适合的。我们不适合每天进出股市。首先来说呢，每天进出股市，你要第一要那个 timing， 也就是说这个时间点要进入的非常对。第二呢，时长波动的变化会对咱们大家很有很大的影响。So for the long-term investor, I think the tactical、uh, points are going to be the ones after the definition of the uptrend. So when we have a change of character, a change of behavior, we want to start participating、um, on the next leg up. So we could have、uh, a point of entry number one、um, off the low, off the reaction. Point of entry number two on the breakout. Point of entry number three after the sign of strength and the backing up action somewhere here, and then we could hold on to this for some time. And by the way, some of those are going to be、uh, swing、uh, swing entries as well, like entry number two and entry number three.、Uh, those are going to be uh, swing uh, swing entries. Hmm. 首先，对于这些长期的呃这些个投资者来说呢。我们要买入点是什么？在趋势确立以后，我们开始买入。这里面是最早的 C O type 的的这个买买，就这个买点。他们买入完以后呢，趋势就开始建立了。我们在哪买？我们在这个回调完以后，这里是第一个买入点，就罗蒙老师画的第一个买入点。第二买入点有可能是突破前期高点的时候，这是第二买入点。第三买入点，我们知道他这上做了一个是这个呃强势强势特征，强势特征完以后。它回调下来，我们在回踩完成以后，在这块是第三买点，然后可能到这块变成第四买点。也就是说，呃，另外啊，对于做波段的来讲，有可能呢，它的买点这里这几个买点也是做波段的人买点。比方说是二三四，就是在这点做波段突破以后，这是做波段的买点；在回调以后，这是做波段的买点，在这里是做波段的买点。And then there's going to be one more entry here for a swing trader. Um, and all of the exits for swing trading is going to be somewhere in this area. 嗯，罗蒙老师说，刚才这个波段，这个买点四啊，有可能是这个是做波段的人的买点。那么做波段的人买点呢，它的卖点只有是低，只有在这里，这是做波段的人卖点。Now the long-term investor is still going to be in this position. The long-term investor is not going to be selling, you know, off this high, and the long-term investor is going to again identify the conditions of the emergence of the trend, a change of character, and then,、uh, <coughs> excuse me, long-term investor is going to get back into the position, not get back, but add to the position again. 嗯，对于长期投资者来说，其实在这里都不是卖点。它一这里面会一直持筹，只要是在 C O 这个价格，呃，这个价值区间内，它都会持筹。在这里面，这大家看到这是特性改变，在长期投资者来说，发现了一个特性改变，也就是下跌趋势变了，变成又变成拉升了。在这一点的时候确认的时候，这是它加仓的机会。So we'll, uh, we'll see how the Long-term investor is adding to the position and tries to stay in these long-term trends.、Uh, tries to accumulate a sizable position, because one of the things that I teach guys is not necessarily diversification.、Um, I think diversification, and I was just discussing it with one of my institutional friends uh, yesterday. Um, diversification for retail uh, traders, um, you know. Should not be discussed in the same realm as、uh, the discussion about、uh, diversification for institutions. When you are in a good position and you're a long-term investor, you should hold on to it until the long-term trend is done.、Um, you don't want to miss the majority of the trend, and、uh, you just want to accumulate more and more on the way up. 嗯，对于长期投资者来说。它的买点是两个，第一个呢是在这里买点，第二个是在这个五，是这个买买五这个点是加仓点。对于长期这个呃投资者来说，他说，呃罗蒙老师说
，它其实并不需要太多的分散布局，因为咱们在做股票或做投资人来说，大家记不记得，有的投资师介绍你叫分散布局，就是买更多的股票。也许他认为，如果你要是学习了魏科夫的话，你知道了这个市场运行规律的时候，分散布局并不是最好的决策，而是说买最好的机构最呃机构。吸筹，它吸筹的最多的股票才是最好的方法。而我们要在这两点买入完以后，等着机构把价格拉到最高。Now at the same time, for the swing trader, again there is a recognition that there is a potential swing trade here. So we're going to add, uh, we're going to create for a swing trader the new uh, set of trades, and they're going to start with the、uh, entry point number five. And they will be exiting somewhere here, so this would be the swing trade. 嗯，作为波波段交易者来说，大家看到这它有这几个交易点，也就是一二三四。它在这里不是已经这个趋势完成以后，趋势完成以后，波段交易者就已经出来了吗？那么在这儿趋势再次确定的时候，这一点也是波段交易者的买入点。然后画一个通道线，然后在这里面趋势完成完以后。And you kind of could see how two different traders are going to have two different trades, two different mentalities, two different exits.、Um, but the understanding of the market, the way how institutions behave, where they are present, you know, and how the price reacts to their presence, it still should be fundamentally the same. So whenever students come to me and they say, "I'm、um, I'm a long-term investor, or I'm a swing trader, or I'm an intraday trader," the key、uh, concept here, or even with different instruments, like I hear that a lot of you trade futures, the key is still going to be in the understanding what is going on behind the scenes. Without that understanding,、uh, you know, all of the signals are going to be just kind of like. Black box type of signals where you don't know what the actual signal means. 嗯，刚才罗蒙老师讲了，不同的交易者，就是不同期呃的交易者来说，大家的买入点和卖入点有可能不一样。在这里面呢，呃，虽然是买呃这个长期的和短期的它买入点不一样，但是这里面呢，波段交易者已经卖了，而这个长期长期持有者这个这个投资者他没有卖。虽然是在这地方。买入点、卖入点有可能不一样，但是对股理的理解、对股市的理解、对于机构它的操作的理解，其实都是一样的。所以说，很多学员到老师那里说：“哎，老师啊，我是长期交易者，或者是我是波段交易者，或者是我是短期交易者，或者是我交易的品种不一样，我交易的是股票，那些人交易的是大宗大宗期货。”其实呢，它的道理是一样的，即使你的操作要求不一样，但是道理是一样的。So、uh, we <coughs> we know that the long-term investor is going to add to the position right here because we we see how supply is being absorbed, the rate of absorption, and then how it's just not present. So anywhere, even on the breakout, you know, the long-term investor can add to the position. The swing investor could、uh, reestablish the new position as well.、Um, and by the way, this stock. Is、uh, here is the symbol for the stock, Mike. I think I'm correct on that. Maybe、yes. wrong. Yes.、Um, yes. So please look into what has happened afterwards. I mean, very popular stock、uh, in China, obviously, as I've learned. Thank you, Mike. And、uh, went up so much, so had a very big cyclical run up,、um, and it came out of this structure. Hmm. In this point, 的时候呢，大家看到刚才在这点的时候，这里面出现了一个 wet。或者是大家所说的这个近似于三角形的这么一个结构，在这个结构呢，大家刚才记不记得龙龙老师说，也许在这个波段交易者在这里面出来了。那么看到这一点，在突破了这个上升三角形的时候，那么这一点呢，其实它可以是重新介入，波段交易者重新介入。而这一点呢，对于长期呃投资者来说，他在这个突破的时候也可以买入，买入完以后，然后跟着跟呃跟涨。原因就是说，在这里面的供应量，它在回调的过程中。或者二次测试这个底的过程中，这个供应量已经非常小了，所以说在这里的突破的时候是一个买入点。那么这只股票呢是六零零五幺九，大概是贵州茅台。大家回去看一下，回去看一下以后，看到贵州茅台在突破了。
这个瓶颈的时候，突破了这个阻力期的时候，它的拉升幅度有多大？所以说大家看，也就是研究这一段来说，其实就是在研究大机构、超大机构和一般机构它的操作，理解这个股里到底是怎么回事。So,、um, I think that we're gonna stop here. We were planning for an hour and a half. Now,、um, in the next session, you know, or whatever we're gonna do, you know, we had set up, you know, some of the slides to discuss the accumulation and the distribution, and that conversation should come.、Um, you know, we just wanted to start with the primer, with the Example of the analysis, so that you guys could kind of get a sense of,、uh, you know, how I analyze the markets and so on and so forth,、um, and also, you know, what the method is about. And obviously, there is a lot of things that are just really the things that I teach.、Um, you know, they're not necessarily method、uh, related.、Um, so I think that in others. Uh, sessions, you know, other sessions we're gonna start with some kind of schematics, you know, either on the price cycle or on the change of character with the trend, or we're gonna look at the accumulation patterns,、uh, distribution patterns, and so on and so forth. So we'll do all of that. What I would like to do and to establish with this particular group is、uh, there is a lot of interest to、uh, have、um, f- official course. And we're working on this, so we're going through some、uh, consulting right now on the legality of this, and so on and so forth. So we'll do that. But what I would like you to do, all of you, is to email us to wikoftrading at hotmail dot com dot com and give us some kind of feedback. And then, Mike, let's discuss what kind of feedback we want. Okay. 那今天呢，由于时间关系，因为已已经一个半小时了，我们大概呢就讲在这里。刚才讲了这个案例啊，就是因为很多同学都会到罗蒙老师那边，哎，罗蒙老师，你是怎么样分析市场的？这就是说，罗蒙老师他除了就是这一这种来说啊，就是他的分析市场，他的分析机构，他的操作，他的买卖，这是他的分析方法。然后呢，我们这里面的呃，他刚才给大家看了很多幻灯片，这里面有很多的示意图。呃，以前的这些示意图也给过大家，也给大家讲过。他希望大家呃自己好好看一下，然后通过大概在以后的课程中，我们会讲这些示意图，再讲这些示意图。而这个呢课程呢，今天讲的课呢是其实是作为正规课的第一课来讲的。那么以后呢，呃的收费课程我们会跟律师咨询一下，比方说在法律问题方面，比方说收费啊或怎么样啊，呃税务啊，我们要把这些咨询清楚。再给大家继续讲课。那么听完第一堂课以后呢，他希望大家的或者要求大家的，就是说给这个 w i k o f t r a d i n g at h o t m a i l c o m 这个邮件发，呃，这个邮箱发邮件，就是告诉你你的想法，或者是你的你希望罗姆老师讲什么，你对这种讲法满意不满意，或者你的要求是什么，把这种呃回馈呃给罗姆老师发过来。And in the feedback, what we'd like to receive is some comments on、uh, what content you think is the most beneficial to you. Then,、um, definitely, you know, because I'm in the United States,、uh, you know, the timing of the sessions.、Uh, you know,、uh, you guys were talking about the course. So, how many sessions?、Uh, you know,、uh, what's what's the pricing that you would be?、Uh, you know.、Uh, Comfortable, you know, with、uh, with this number of sessions and so on and so forth, and um, um, also, you know, the start. You know, when can we start this? So all of this would be very helpful. And one more thing that、um, I want to mention、uh, about the、uh, the content itself. So、um, I hear from a lot of you that a lot of you trade futures. And、uh, those are kind of like you know the Chinese-related futures, right? So I was asking Mike uh, uh, about, let's say, oil, and you know, it's、uh, it's actually, as I understand, less popular. So、um, we can go through a lot of the historical charts of、um, 
uh, of this type of futures because the logic is all going to be the same. The logic of institutional presence in the specific spot in the structure and here we could be more specific as to the phases of where it's happening and then what would be the most beneficial uh, the most valuable uh, points of entry for us at some point or another you know for a possible trade and what would this type of activity mean and so on and so forth so we'll go through this uh, we'll definitely could cover something like this. Uh, it's, uh, it could be a part of our discussion. Uh, we also could look into more of the, uh, let's say, uh, intraday trades as well. Uh, it's going to be maybe a little bit uh, harder, but you know, it's definitely possible for us to do, uh, to do all of that. 首先在回馈的过程中呃内容里面呃罗蒙老师希望大家告诉他比方说讲课的内容你希望讲一些什么内容你都可以呃给给他呃给他发出建议另外呢时间可不可以咱们现在的比方说罗蒙老师他在早
这种收费的特别系统的培训，好不好？大家都写信给他。All right, guys. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you so much for being here. Um, we are looking forward to our new meetings in the future. And Mike, thank you so much for such a great translation. Okay, 如果大家没有问题的话，那么今天就到这里。谢谢大家的收看，谢谢大家的参与。我们以后再给大家，呃，再跟大家联系和沟通。好，也谢谢翻译，他也非常、非常、非常好的对这个提到我。好，谢谢大家，谢谢罗蒙老师。All right, thank you guys. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. 谢谢。